access. She's, she's trying to go through all the videos and make them available through the district site. So I, I think she should get a copy with an email in it um, as she's one of the other hosts on the meeting. So it should be okay. just fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so um, we're all here. We're happy to answer questions if folks have them. I can also walk through. Um, Lori asked if I if I could prepare a couple um, resources that I can show folks if they're interested. Um, uh, but yeah, feel free to uh, introduce yourself in the chat or uh, chime in with a question. And just remind us of your site. So we've got so Karen. If you could just type in your school site and Thomas, Tom, you're you're it's a special ed. You're everywhere. Okay. Okay, so I just want to clarify that for these office hours, there's not really, it's it's not a training or a PD. It is it is just open to questions. And we have we have people in here um, that have been invited in to help out with specific resources. So um, uh, let's see. Bertha, you think I should, should I share the e-learning page just to make sure everybody's seen that? Okay, I'm going to share my screen and make sure that everybody knows where to go and find resources that have been posted. Hi, Lori. How do you do this, Bertha? Oh, here we go. You guys? Go down to present screen. Yeah, no, it, it should be coming up. Yeah, it, it takes a, minute, a second or two. There we go. Welcome, Lori. Do you guys see anything? Because I don't. So go ahead and select the tab with the e-learning website in it. You're going to have to click away from the meet for a moment, but we'll still be able to see everything. Okay. There, there it is. is. So you guys, okay. I, I've never done this, so I didn't know what I saw as opposed to what you see. Okay. So this is has been set up on the district website. You can go to it by typing in, oh, Bertha, remind me, bit.ly. Um, actually, I don't know the bit.ly. I know how to get the, if you go to the district website. I'll put in the bit.ly. Okay. But you can also just go to the district website, which is how I remember how to do it. If you go to the district website and you click on e-learning, then you get this page and when you want to look for things for teachers, you can either click here or you can click up here. So if you go to the secondary page, which is what I had up ori originally, this is where everything has been posted that we have accumulated so far. So um, I think most of the people who are here are ELA right now. So if you, if you scroll down, through all the choices, you will eventually get to high school, English language arts and literacy. So I just added this piece right here um, that Springboard shared with me. They have, they have added remote learning resources to their community webpage, which you should see in your, in your um, Clever Access 
by looking for this pink or fuchsia colored springboard tile. Um, ERWC, for any of you who teach that, has also provided resources and there's a link here to that. Um, Sora, Bertha maybe can speak more about, but it's, it's eBooks that it looks like an awesome library that you can simultaneously have your kids check them out and read. And then the other thing that I added are a whole bank of graphic organizers and literacy strategies that were developed um, actually several years ago when we were working on um, doing Common Core Align modules. But there's a lot of there's a lot of very useful graphic organizers in there. So if you open that up, you can find all kinds of things that are ready to go. Um, I'm gonna un. I'm going to stop presenting. All right. And if no one has any immediate questions, um, I'm happy to just show kind of how my classroom is looking these days in a remote way. Um, if everyone's that would be good. seeing that. All right. Um, so I use uh, Canvas, not Google Classroom, unlike most of the ELA teachers in our district, so I hope this is not confusing for folks. Um, but it, it's really, I mean, in, though it looks a little different in principle, it's the exact same thing. So I'm going to share uh, what my classroom looks like at this moment. Okay. Um, so this is my 10th grade class. Uh, this is actually my entire year, so you can see all my previous modules. And of course, you don't quite have the same module set up in uh, Google Classroom, but you can get sort of the same thing where you're just putting assignments uh, with different information. So I'm going to show you the email unit that I just started. Um, I usually do this in lecture and on paper, ironically, but um, every year I like to talk to them about how to write emails. And it seems uh, particularly important right now, uh, seeing as how I'm getting a lot of email from them and uh, they're not great. So um, what I ended up doing was making a lecture uh, that I recorded. So I recorded my own computer screen and uh, me talking over it and showing them a bunch of different email stuff. And then I posted it in an assignment um, and I gave them guided notes. So I'll show you guys what my guided notes look like. And then I had them, so usually they do this pen and paper with a picture of an email on it because I find they like the tangibleness of it. Um, so this year I had to transfer all of my materials over into a Google slide deck. So they had instructions on uh, watching the video lecture, um, then they were supposed to take notes, and then I put a couple sort of interactive activities on there. Um, so I gave them a page with vocab, and then this is what their interactive notes look like. So this is actually just a picture of an email with all sorts of bells and whistles on it, and then they can type in all these text boxes. So as I was explaining the different parts of the email, they were supposed to go through and type um, notes on what I was saying. Um, and then I gave them some activities. So here's a terrible email that I wrote that they had to tell me why it was really, really bad. Um, and then here was a drag and drop activity. So I gave them little pictures of all the symbols on emails and they were supposed to drag and drop them next to uh, whatever they represented. Um, so that is how I went from my sort of paper packety thing <laughs> to moving it online. Um, and I, so far kids, it seemed to be doing well. I don't know. I got about eight kids turning that in. I gave it, threw it up yesterday. Um, so hopefully that will work out well. Um, but I, I found that I am actually leaning more on lecture than I usually do just because um, it, it seems harder to sort of get information to them than it does in a normal classroom when I can do a lot of immediate check-ins and responsive stuff. So I, my lectures are longer. Um, and I, I also really like showing my face to my students. I think that's really helpful. I think the more that you show your face, the more sort of positive interaction you'll get with your students. So I've been trying to do that as much as possible. Um, so while I don't love lecturing, I think that in a remote learning situation, it's kind of better than just the throwing up an online activity where they're staring at a computer screen all the time. Um, I don't know if other people have comments about that as well. Uh, 
Um, anybody else who's moving their classroom online have something that they're working on right now, have something that's sort of changed or adjusted um, since we went digital? Oh, someone asked what platform for recording your lectures. I've actually done it a couple ways. I've been using Google Hangouts a lot um, when I want to show my face. So I've been um, getting an empty meeting room and having a meeting with myself, sharing my screen, recording it, and then it automatically sends it to my Google Drive. So the, the quality of that video isn't great, but I'm really liking it in terms of just um, its ease. Um, I'm also using their two tools that let you um, record your screen that are pretty widely available, um, Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify. Um, I've tried them both. So Screencastify, I found, was really slick, but um, I didn't like their features quite as much, and they cut you off after, I think, 10 minutes, which I found frustrating. Um, Screencast-O-Matic gives you 15 minutes, which you wouldn't think those five minutes make much of a difference, but they do. Um, and well, Screencast-O-Matic is a little bit more of a learning curve. It's not bad, and I found it just more usable in general. Um, so uh, I believe those two tools were in the ELA, or sorry, in the um, secondary learning list as well. Um, the, the frustrating thing about recording lectures in, in terms of a um, accessibility standpoint is it's hard to get uh, automatically generated captions. Um, I don't have any kids who um, who have who are hard of hearing currently, but I think that if I had kids in my class that um, were needed those kinds of supports, I'd probably be reaching for different tools. Um, I might have to make more handouts or something like that. Um, I actually have a fix for that. Um, you said about the captions. So this is what I, and I learned this like the last couple of weeks because we have a teacher who comes to our um, office hours who is hard of hearing. So this is what I learned. First of all, when you, um, when you do the uh, recording of yourself using Google Hangouts Meet, you do get um, the chats, which doesn't work, of course, if you're recording yourself and you're by yourself. But um, if you upload to YouTube, yeah. it will actually allow you to have captions. They can turn on the captions. You don't have to really do anything. I mean, actually, let's see, when you upload it, there's a button, but I think it's default that will just put in the captions for you. And they're actually pretty good. Um, this, this teacher who's hard of hearing said that, you know, she's like, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because it's working. So if you upload something to YouTube, so if you use studio.youtube.com, upload it to YouTube. Um, and then like very easily you can link it into Google classroom. I don't, I don't know about canvas, but you can very easily link it into Google classroom from, um, from YouTube. It's awesome. So give that a try. That's that's my answer. I, I'm so excited that I had something to answer. <laughs> and if if timing, if the amount of time that you're uh, if you're running into a wall where you know 10 or 15 minutes isn't long enough, and you're uh, able to install it, if you can use Open Broadcasting, it'll record your entire screen or even just a section of your screen. And you can also do like chroma key, change your background. That's why I'm sitting in front of a green background right now. But you can make your videos as long as you want. And then you can even go back and use the studio editor in YouTube to cut out a section if it was no good. Or maybe, you know, maybe you started recording and you misplaced something. You don't want to start all over again. Wow. Um, so those are those are options. And I'm using that more for my science classroom right now than I am for for my ELA. But uh, I have started recording short videos with instructions for students just because I can type out the instructions and they won't read them. Oh, sure, I'll, I'll post a link to the website where you can download the software right now, one moment. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's totally free. There is a, there's a slight learning curve to getting, the, uh, to getting it set up and dialed in the way you like. But once you have it set up, it works like a dream. And it took me, I want to say, three days to get it all dialed in. So I never have to do anything to it ever again. All right. Here we go. Here's the link. But I can also make tutorials that would cut down on that time as well. 
So OBS project. Now district so district hardware won't allow you to install this, I don't think, because we don't have admin access. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's free. It's 100% free and it's open source. Um, and it, you can, like I said, you can record your entire screen or I can make it where I can minimize myself down into the corner and show my whole browser window to students or show a document to students. Yes, it's 100% free and um, it's great. And so lots of people use it to make YouTube videos or broadcast to Twitch. Um, the district does not have the ability for us to live stream to YouTube enabled right now on our teacher accounts. Uh, I would actually probably start doing live stream lessons if they would allow if they if that was enabled. But I also understand that that's like a hinky privacy thing, and there's a, all the COPPA and FERPA stuff going on right now. I mean, we're kind of a, turning the, turning a blind eye to all of that, but it's kind of right there in, in the front of my mind. <laughs> okay, so I can talk to the live stream piece. Um, if if um, the only thing, so here's my only thing about live stream. Um, I believe you can set it up right now. Um, and I just wouldn't do it if students were in there with you. Yes. Or if students were in there with you, you don't want to see their faces. Well, you know, you can't actually, when you're live streaming, they can only see my face. And there's okay. no chat enabled either. So that's the, that's the one piece that, but I could literally say, okay, I want you to tune into my live stream from 10 yeah. to 1030. I'm going right. to be talking about uh, the English lesson from today. And it could be where I have a uh, another window with Google Classroom open, and they could be asking questions there in the sure. comments. And then that's like a permanent running record of everything and all of my interactions. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So I can I can talk briefly about Study Sync if you want to. Um, mm. I'm using Study. I mean, I'm leaning on Study Sync for some remote learning right now. Um, it's hard because there's the there's a a piece of study sync that is still paper based. And it was one thing that the publisher had kind of talked about that maybe they were going to be giving us form fillable PDFs that students could type directly into. Um, that has not happened. And it's also just one of those things that they probably haven't uh, even paid any mind to it. So we just, because we normally just print them out and give them directly to students. So I've been ignoring that piece and leaning really heavily on the online tools because we can write our own questions. Um, and include them as part of the lessons, which makes life a little bit easier. And I can go ahead and share uh, what my classroom looks right now. There's a ton of work, but I'll go ahead and share that window real fast. Present a window. So this is just the online tool. I have not given it access to, or I should say complete control access to my Google Classroom. So these are just assignments that uh, I assigned this week. Some of them are not due. As you can see, they started like Monday and they're not due until the Friday after spring break because a lot of students haven't even looked at them yet. You can see these numbers that in the completed. Some students just get everything done right away. Some students procrastinate and wait to get things done. But I went back and since I knew that we were not gonna be really trying to introduce too many new ideas, I was trying to review uh, material from previous uh, units that we had not uh, covered in class. And so this is not, so it's not new, new, but it's things like, hey, are we going to read this? I said, well, if we get a chance. And now that chance has presented itself. So I'm going to mute myself for a minute here because I have to cough. Sorry about that. Bertha, do you want to talk about Sora at all? Or do people um, well, mostly know about that? Yeah, so I guess maybe let me get over into my right correct view of you all. Um, do you have people, you know, tried out Sora at all? Um, I guess not everybody's got their camera on or open, so I can't see if you give me a thumbs up. Um, basically, it is... Um, for schools, ebooks, they've opened things up a lot for us right now during this time, um, which means that we have a lot of access to um, things that have multiple copies available. Typically, within the district, um, for our ebooks, we have one copy for the entire district. So, adding in things like OverDrive and Sora, Sora is part of the OverDrive family. 
has um, opened up the number of copies available. The nice thing about Sora is um, you're going to see grade level appropriate um, things. Um, so you don't have to worry that if you have a younger uh, student um, sibling that they're gonna get into Sora and see something that is there for their older, you know, like maybe we've got an elementary school student who has a high school student sibling. Um, if they're on their own devices, they're going through their Sora, that's not gonna be an issue. Sora is going to have that figured out for them. Um, if you have specific questions, I can try and answer them for you. My gosh, it's quiet like a library in here. I, I know. <laughs> I was I was trying to speak, but my mic was muted. Oh, okay. Um, is so I have I realized before I left, and now seeing as the su state superintendent seems to think that school won't be at least reconvening in classrooms. Um, would it be possible for me to share uh, novels through Sora to my class and allow them to read them there? Because I have PDFs available of all the literature that we would be reading in class anyway. So I could just post that as a material to my Google Classroom. But I mean, I, if we want to be leveraging Sora as something that we're using and as a, because it reads to the kids, does is that correct? Because um, my PDFs don't read. books will read. I'm not sure that all the titles in Sora read. It might be like a little read along um, mm -hmm. tracking thing. Audiobooks are also in there. Um, I know in Overdrive and also in Destiny Discover, you can create collections. So that would be one way to highlight those novels for your students. I'm not really sure about Sora. So um, I might have Allison get back to you on that if I don't get an answer directly. Okay. So let me just make a note to myself. If you send a PDF, oh, someone else talking? Okay, if you send a PDF to your students, all the students in the district have the free version of the Read and Write toolbar, and there is a Read Out Loud in there that they can use to read it out loud to them. That would most likely be what I would, how I would send it to them, is just as a PDF that was okay. available freely. So that seems to be the, the stop gap right now. I, I like to I like to put a book in their hand just because it works without electricity. However, right. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do what we can do in the, in these times. Yep. Well, and you know, they can have Sora on their phone. They can have, so that's kind of uh, a nice convenience too. Um, it just, it, it, there's some flexibility. Um, and we know that there still are issues for some families with getting um, some reliable Wi-Fi going and IT is is working really hard to try and get that um, taken care of, at least connecting people with resources. It's gonna, I think it's going to get harder. Comcast opened up a lot of their um, Wi-Fi spots out in the world so that you didn't have to sign in necessarily, um, but it's going to start getting harder to just be able to hang out someplace, right? So that you can borrow some Wi-Fi um, because I think they're going to be a little bit more vigilant about people hanging out and what they're doing. So, Yeah, the restrictions but, that went into place at midnight the other night are pretty onerous. Again, there's a lot yeah. of stuff going on. Yeah. Bertha? Yes. T Thomas is asking how you assign in Sora. Do you, can you maybe share your screen and um, or 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 answer not that question? Quickly. Assign, as in, what, what Thomas do you mean by assigning in Sora? Like assign a novel, a, assign a book. Yeah, it's, it's, or with, you, with, you check it out. You just yeah. check it out. It's it's an online library um, system, so. Um, you know, again, you can direct a student either if you've got like a, a place where you have announcements for your students, here are the things to look at. 
or you're mm -hmm. communicating with them elsewise, you could certainly create a link for Sora uh, in that message to the students to get them there a little bit quicker. Um, but it's not a way that you can assign a book. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Julia is asking about access to book room texts. Um, yeah, so some things have an online component, some things uh, do not. Um, that's definitely uh, a bigger question for Francie. Um, she has been working hard to make sure that within Clever, we have the necessary links set up. If there's something specific that your class is using, um, then I would recommend sending an email to textbooks at uh, wccusd.net and let her know what you're looking to link. Um, if we have it already, she'll point you in that direction. Otherwise, um, she'll give you a suggestion as to how you can just add that link for yourself um, if you've got that. Um, if it's something that the district hasn't purchased, that is. But otherwise, um, it, it, we're getting slammed with a lot of emails of the free for now offers. So uh, it's really hard to sift through all of that and stay on top of these other things that we're supporting right now. But um, yeah, you could certainly ask via email on that. Um, so I'll just mention a couple other resources that I found really helpful um, in our last two minutes of our uh, office hours. So um, I've been really using a lot of Edpuzzle. Uh, Ralph Bedwell mentioned it in the chat uh, a little while ago. But I found Edpuzzle exceptionally useful. So you can put it on, uh, it basically uh, forces students to stop and answer questions at particular moments through a video. You can use it either for YouTube videos that already exist, or you can um, use lectures that you have, whatever makes the most sense. Um, you could also use a, uh, I believe you can use audio. So if you have just recorded information, you can put stop, make them stop and answer questions throughout. Um, I tend to focus on uh, different discussion questions, and that's a way to get kids engaged. Um, but really, you can even just ask, did this happen? Yes, no. Um, I've also been really um, reaching a lot for uh, Pear Deck, which is uh, maybe not as used a tool, but it is an interactive slideshow. So um, it, again, will stop at particular points, and kids can engage with it either through discussion questions, multiple choice. Um, I think, believe they can even draw uh, in Pear Deck. They've limited, uh, as opposed to all the other tools, they've actually clamped down a little bit on um, what they're offering people for free, um, but it's still a really, really good tool. Um, I also just like name drop a couple more. There's a lot of vocab stuff out there. Um, Townsend Press has some good ones, vocabulary.com, Membean. Um, there's some grammar stuff on Grammarly and No Red Ink. I yeah. wrote a list, I'm trying to look up. Um, and also News ELA, uh, News Outlaw, is a really, really, really good resource um, for, uh, literacy stuff. Um, anybody else have any other resources that they've been finding helpful? I'm sorry, I was too efficient in my list. I'll try to be less efficient next time. You had a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I think this is the first time I've seen you without your hat on. Oh, yeah, I do that once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, can you type in the name of that last thing that you, or the thing you were talking, Paradeck or whatever that was? Yeah, pear, um, like the fruits. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of fun and it's actually I really like using it in class um, because you'll have sort of this dual screen thing going on so you'll have something projected mm -hmm. on the board and then kids will be receiving something different they can type into and it used to be though I think they've taken this feature away from the free version um, you could post all the discussions anonymously um, which was really fun because kids would sort of loosen up and, and give you a lot of really great responses um, nice. to, yeah. 
I'll check that out. Thanks. All right, so that's about our time for office hours. So um, unless there's any last minute questions, I'm gonna um, go ahead and cut the recording um, and uh, we can go back to the many other tasks we have today. All the other things. So um, everybody has um, access, has taken a look at then the, um, the PD um, calendar for this week. And um, you've got all that, right? So that you, you know where you can pop into. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, Thank you.